So you're bringing your new puppy into this world and you want to turn it into a gun dog. Well, how do we start doing that? Hopefully, you've bought a puppy from the right sort of breeder. A breeder who's honest and straightforward with you. And if that, if that breeder is honest, he would have done so much with these dogs before you'd even picked them up. These dogs, at this age, it's so important we build that gameplay. Even at this age, look at that little pup. We half the tennis balls to begin with. You never leave these tennis balls with these pups. This is only through gameplay for five minutes, ten minutes, and then you take it off them. It's as simple as that. At this stage of the training, there's no discipline used at all. It's all that they want to be with you and they have fun when they're with you. So whether I'm feeding them, hand feeding them, mince meat at this age, I give them raw mince meat at this age, as well as their dry food, they see me as their protector, their provider. And it's so important at this stage. I want a waggy tail, I want a happy little dog, and that's what you get if you go to a breeder who knows what they're talking about. We bred these spaniels some years back, and these spaniels have gone on to be fantastic companions out in the field, or make wonderful pets if you control them and train them in the way that I show you. And these videos that are gonna follow is gonna show you from puppy, eight weeks old, we're gonna start with a puppy, and we're gonna bring that puppy on and train that puppy the way I show you, the way I do it. So many trainers train different ways. Some put obedience into dog too soon, in my opinion. This is the way I train dogs, and I'll show you how to get the best out of your dog by creating drive, creating gameplay, and having the ability to want to listen to you at the right time. They're puppies, let them be puppies. Too many people are taking away their natural ability or, and finding that they're causing problems with their pups. I don't rush these pups, but I can show you how to get a dog to a very good standard within 12 months of that dog's age. We can get that dog listening to us, wanting to play the game and loving life. Then we can start using discipline. Why would we want to use discipline on these little sweet things at this age here? This is all to do with follow me, listen to me, everything's fun, and I'll make it fun for you. And then that dog will trust you and want to be with you for the rest of its life and have a wonderful life with you and that dog. And that's what's so important, everybody. It's getting out there and enjoying it and having fun with that dog. And that's what these videos have, have helped people with and they've created and the good feedback we're getting is because of that. Anybody can can buy a pup. It's knowing where to start, how to condition the dog. Now, we did a survey on the live feed that we were talking about last week and we asked people how many people keep the dogs inside the house compared to people keeping dogs in kennels. And I think it was about 60 to 60 to 70 percent of people keep the dogs in the house as a house dog as well as a gun dog. These dogs were all kept outside in the kennels, but I give them 10, 15 minutes play in the morning and 10, 15 minutes play in the afternoon. And in that time, I feed them at the same time. I'm getting these dogs to get used to humans, not fear humans in any way, but see humans as a positive and the pack. It's so important that they grow up in this pack until they leave at eight weeks of age. You should never buy a puppy from anybody who's trying to let you have it at seven weeks of age because the dog should be with the pack. And it's so important to be brought up in that pack and learn to share, learn to fight, learn to play, learn to, learn to back off. They're learning all the time at this stage. They're just little sponges that are soaking in that information. And you can change the mindset if you start using obedience and being firm with these dogs. They can become timid, they can become scared, and then you've got a different dog on your hand. At the end of the day, this is all gameplay. They're learning through association, and that's so important. So many people don't realize that this is an important stage in their lives, but it doesn't mean you've got to be training them um, and over-training them. It's so important, and that's why I put up these videos to give you education and understanding. Which pup will I pick out of this? Well. The one that takes my eye, the one that the one that says buy me, it's as simple as that. Or if there's one left at the end of the at the end of the litter, I'll have that one, because I can turn that dog into a nice dog. They change so much at this stage; they're going through changes. One minute you've got a bold one that wants to take on the pack, 
and bully everybody. Next minute he gets turned over by another dog, knocks him back. His confidence goes a little bit and all of a sudden he's sitting at the back and he's not so, not so confident because he pushed his boundaries and somebody nailed him. Someone, one of the soft ones nailed him and said, I'm not having it. And so they're learning, they're learning to play. They're learning to associate with each other and have fun. And yet there's boundaries. They lay on top of each other and they sleep. They eat together. There's no fighting because at this point we're asking them to share things. We're asking them to share. It's about that, that social bond that you're putting into these dogs at this stage. It's so important. There he is again, look, sweet little waggy tail. Go for that one. Go for that waggy tail. Go for the confident little waggy tail one. The one that takes your eye. Some people pick the quiet one in the corner because they think he's going to be softer. Not always the case, trust me. Sometimes the one in the corner in another few weeks comes out of itself and starts showing more potential. You know, there's no way as a professional trainer could I pick one of these and say it's going to be a field trial champion. All I can tell you, in the right hands, you'll train it to a very good standard because the breeding's right. It's important about the breeding. Not enough trainers out there are as honest as you think. And unfortunately, you get mixed pedigrees. You get pedigrees that aren't really the dogs in the pedigree sometimes. And it's potluck. So if you can find a trainer who's honest and, and has the integrity to want to bring on pups of quality, then I've far more go for that than just the red red sells pups is as simple as that the red in the pedigree and when i say red in the pedigree for anyone who's never doesn't know what i'm on about we're talking about field trial champions if it's got champions you can actually put field trial winners with red in the pedigree but you, you'd see ftw and that's field trial winners if a dog's won a field trial and and it's won it on merit it's going to be a good little dog it's proved itself in the field I'd rather take a dog with quality breeding than just any old dog. But trust me, some some bitches I see, I think, oh, I wouldn't mind a pop out of that. And it doesn't matter what breeding it is because she's quality. People come here and I think, I'd have a pop out of her any day. She's lovely. But one of the things I don't want is noise. I don't want noise. And yet puppies make noise. And yet you, you want them to grow up and not be noisy, not be whiny. And it's so important. You see so many cockers here that are noisy because people breed just for the sake of making money, a lot of people. Where these springers are bred specifically for working dogs, um, and yet some of them do go as wonderful pets in homes, and some of them go as trial dogs, and some go as just complete working dogs. That's the important thing, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that video. Chris Upton, signing off.